One Friday morning, about 9.30, as I'm on my way to work, my usual route was blocked due to an accident being cleared up. So I took the quieter, longer route through the industrial park east of my house. I passed the only gas station on my way in and I headed through the park, which is quiet except for diesel trucks and the rare car like my own. As I come over a small hill and over a set of train tracks, I see a car pulled over to the side with its hood up, and a guy just standing there next to the driver's side door, looking at me as I approached the hill. The car was a copper-colored two-door sports car from the late 70s or early 80s, Nissan I think. I'm usually pretty good with cars, but the guy distracted me, and he looked straight out of the late 70s. I'll never forget this guy, blue jeans, white shirt collar showing above his coat, tan work boots, darkish tan 70s style leather coat with wool showing at the collar and a thick dark mustache and he also had a John Travolta from Saturday Night Fever haircut. He was a bigger guy, probably in his mid 40s and around 6 feet tall or so. He had a bit of a gut but clearly a thick dude who was in bad shape. His hands were deep in his pockets but his feet planted firmly and he had his back straight up. As I see him I slow down to see what the problem is and I start to pull over to get behind his car he's just staring at me the entire time. There were no nods or gestures saying hello, or even any hands waving to signal me. No smile. Nothing. Just staring with his face perfectly flat, hands in pockets and not moving. I get this super creepy feeling and as I'm about to pull over, I pulled away and sped off instead. But that's usually very unlike me. I often like to stop to help people all the time, but this guy just gave me a bad feeling I couldn't shake. As I look into the rear view mirror, I see he's not moved, but just turned his head a little bit to watch me go. And as I watch, he turns back to stare west, over the tracks for the next car to come along. I get to work and I'm feeling bad that I didn't help the guy out, but I tell my boss and close friend about the encounter, and he tells me he gets creeped out just hearing about it, and I should be glad I trusted my gut instinct. I don't think about it much more and I get to work. But on my way home, I took that route back home just to see if his car was left there just in case he had a real problem, but sure enough, it was gone. Feeling relieved he had at least gotten his car taken care of, I felt less bad about not helping some stranger because I got weirded out by his appearance and demeanor for some reason. So I get home and go to sleep and I think nothing of it. I actually worked Saturdays at the time and I always took the long way to work on Saturdays since I didn't have to worry about traffic as much. Come 9.30 the next day, I'm heading the same way to work that I took the day before but because the industrial park is full of Monday to Friday type companies, it's always a ghost town on the weekends and evenings. When I came home the previous night, I drove for 15 minutes in that area. Really low speed limits and it's a long road through and I did not see another car on the road there. Even the gas station closes its inside operations on Saturdays and evenings after 6. Nobody was ever around that area during these off time hours. So I'm driving up the hill and sure enough, the same guy is there again. Same car, same spot, with his hood up, and standing next to the driver's side door. If I hadn't been so creeped out by the guy the day before, I may not have noticed how eerily similar it was. Like he somehow hadn't moved since the day before. This time, however, he reacted to seeing me, pulling a hand out of his pocket and trying to wave me down, but without moving his feet, and clearly yelling something. I sped up, and he clearly heard my tin can of a Toyota rev up. And I kid you not, he put both hands up and moved, as if to step in front of my car to block me. His face never changed the whole time. Just that blank stare as he started to step in front of my car, into the two-lane road I was on. I swerved a little to avoid hitting him and I kept going. But now here's the thing, that section of the road is straight for quite a ways. And though I was really shaken up by the encounter, I looked in my mirror to see him just step back to his car and keep staring west, just like the day before. Like a stranger hadn't just swerved to avoid killing him and leaving him to his own devices. It was really weird. I'm glad to say I never saw him again after that, but I did call my local police, of whom I personally know several officers, one of which was a neighbor, thinking maybe he really did have a problem. At the time, a few things stood out to me though. Mainly that the day before the gas station would have been open, and if he didn't have a cell phone, it was less than a block away, and he would have had to have passed it in order to be on that particular stretch of road. There's no way you couldn't have seen it and been where he was supposedly broken down. I hadn't thought of it Friday, but it struck me hard Saturday when I saw him again. Second, it was the exact same everything. 
Car with the hood up. Outfit. Even the shirt as far as I could tell. Place. And even the way he just stood there waiting for a car to come from the west over a hill. Since I knew his car hadn't been left overnight, it all felt very, very wrong. Lastly, the dead look on his face when he tried to flag me down. I could see him clear as day. I was going 25 miles per hour, which is the speed limit in that spot. He didn't change expression when he saw me. He just went through the motions. That was probably the most unsettling thing to me. Later that day, I asked one of my cop buddies if they came across the guy, but he hadn't heard anything. And even later on, I came to find out the cop on that route hadn't come across anybody when he stopped by a bit later. It's a small town. Not much happens there. Not emergencies are slow to be dealt with at best. My buddy told me thanks for calling it in. A stranded motorist can get really screwed when no one is around. But also good on me for following my instincts about that guy. Basically, if you feel creeped out by a stranded motorist, call the cops and they'll find and help them. This happened to me a few days ago. I don't usually catch the bus home from work, but my car broke down and I had no choice. It was about 6 p.m. and I was sitting, reading and minding my own business, in a quiet corner of the bus station when a man came over and sat next to me. He was perhaps mid-fifties, with baggy, scruffy clothes on. He smelt very badly of sweat and, after a few seconds, it started to make me feel sick. Then he started rubbing his hands together and mumbling to himself. Yes, yes, yes. At that point, I got up, making out that I was checking bus times and turned the corner of the bus station to sit in a busier area. I sat on a bench facing my bus stop and settled down to my book once again. But about five minutes later, I could see out of the corner of my eye that someone was coming over to me. I shuffled in my seat and lo and behold, it was the man again. He once again sat right next to me and this time he was uncomfortably close. He was twitching and still mumbling the same thing, and the mumbling was getting louder. The bus was late now, and I started to get freaked out. However, there were people around, but nothing had actually happened, so I couldn't really ask for help. After a few seconds, I got up to join the queue that had started forming for my bus. The man didn't follow me, although I looked over once and I could see him looking at me. The bus pulled up, and still, the man did not move. I began to breathe a sigh of relief as I turned to board the bus, safely sandwiched between two other people. As I had my foot on the step of the bus, I heard a scuffle behind me. I turned around and the man had pushed into the queue to be directly behind me. My heart started to beat faster and I began to think that he was actually trying to follow me. I knew if I chose a seat by myself, he would sit next to me for sure, so I sat next to a woman right at the front of the bus. The man still sat directly behind me. I could hear his breathing and his murmuring. I could still smell the sweat. I still needed to catch another bus when I got off of this one, and my plan was to just run as fast as I could across town to the other bus stop, hoping he wouldn't follow, or at least wouldn't be able to catch up. Luckily, I managed to run and get on the other bus just as it was pulling off. I didn't look behind me as I did, and maybe I was just being paranoid. Either way, I won't be catching the bus home from work again in a hurry. This was back in 2015 or 2016. I'm a career tow truck driver, and at this point, I've been towing cars for most of my adult life, and I will likely do so until I either retire or die, whichever comes first. At the time, I was working for a pretty small towing company with only two employees, and we rotated who was on call each weekend. It was my weekend on call, and it was summer, so with people being out and about late and whatnot, I was pretty busy cleaning up accidents, towing broken down cars, both in the city and off the highway. I was fine with it, as I was paid commission at the time, so the more calls I did, the more money I made. It was a Saturday night, now Sunday morning, and it's around 2.30 to 3 o'clock in the morning. And like I said, I've been busy. I'm tired and a little grumpy, and I kind of just wanted to go home, when my phone rings. It's an insurance company asking if we can do a tow for one of their customers, who was broken down on the side of the highway. The breakdown location they give me is about 15 miles out of town, which I normally wouldn't do, but the tow destination happens to be a dealership that's only a couple minutes away from my apartment. I contemplated rejecting the call, but because I'm paid commission, I figured screw it. I can run up and grab this car, drop it off around the corner from my place, and hopefully I can just head home and get a couple hours of shut-eye. 
so I take the call and I hop on the highway. The insurance company provided me with the customer's first name, which we'll say was Kara, and gave me a phone number for her. Usually I try to make contact with people who are on the side of the highway to let them know I'm on my way and give them an ETA. I tried calling her a couple of times, but she didn't answer. Not unusual though. After a short while, I see hazard lights up the way on the shoulder, so I turn on my strobes and start slowing down. As I approach, I notice that not only is there the late model car that I'm looking for, but there's another car on scene as well that doesn't have its hazards on, and is parked in front of the car I'm meant to tow. This can be kind of annoying but not uncommon, as I need to be able to get in front of the disabled car in order to load it, and sometimes people don't realize that. But because the car is there, I instead pull up behind both cars. You're supposed to do this so that as the tow driver, you're the one that has to make the weird maneuver of pulling off the shoulder and back onto the shoulder, and so the other car just has to drive straight forward on the shoulder. Standing at the trunk of the late model car, which is now directly in front of me, is a man and a woman. The woman is probably in her early 20s and dressed up for a night out. She's probably about 5'1", maybe 5'2", and she's wearing tight leather pants, a halter top, long black hair, and is very pretty. The man, on the other hand, is probably around 5'10", and skinny, maybe 150 pounds, wearing a dark hoodie and dirty jeans. They're standing very close, facing each other. She has her arms crossed and he's leaning down talking to her. I stepped out of my truck and approached them both and introduced myself. They separate a few feet and I look at the woman and say, Are you Kara? And she nods. I say I'm here for an insurance company and I ask what's going on with the car. Pretty much immediately the man pipes up and says, Yeah, it's just having some fuel issues. It's an easy fix. Can you please just drop it off at this commuter parking lot? I'm going to fix it up for her. I'm rather annoyed at this because the commuter lot in question is further up the highway and I'm already 15 miles out of town. Like I said before, I only took this call because it was supposed to be coming back toward my apartment and I really wanted to go home. Not only that, but in order to change the original tow destination, I would have to call the insurance company and wait on hold for who knows how long for a representative and then let them know of the change and try to get them to pay me extra for the dead miles back home after unloading and I really didn't want to do any of that. And thirdly, this is a late model car. I'm no mechanic, but it's new enough that whatever is wrong with it, it's likely covered under warranty, so the dealership is really the best place for it to go anyways. I explained all of this to the guy, but he's really not having it. He starts to get stern with me, saying something like, look man, you just need to take the car where I tell you to take it. We go back and forth on this for maybe 60 seconds and he's just getting more mad. Well, you know what, man? You're not the name insured. Car is. The easy way to settle this is to ask what she wants me to do with the car, and whatever she says is what I'll do. Fingers crossed she'll want to take it to the dealership so I can get home sooner. So I turn to look at Car to ask her that question, and I don't see her right away. She's no longer standing where she was just a minute ago, which was slightly off to my right. I continue to not see her until I've turned almost all the way around, because she's standing directly behind me, and by directly, I mean with an inch of my back, arms still crossed. I look down at her and she locks eyes with me. Her eyes were as wide as plates, almost owl-like. And immediately, it feels like she's staring into my soul. She didn't say a word and she didn't have to. I took a step back and did what felt like a double take. I looked at him, then at her, then at him again and then back at her and it slowly started to dawn on me that maybe something isn't right. I asked her, Do you know this guy? And she ever so slightly shook her head no. The expression on her face when I asked her that will forever be burned in my skull. I turned to the guy and was like, Oh, you gotta go, man. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm a tough guy, if there is such thing, and I don't care who knows it. I've got nothing to prove. I'm also super averse to confrontation, and I will run at the first sight of trouble. I'm not exactly the biggest of guys either. I am, however, what I like to call sturdy. I'm 5'8 and 240 pounds. I have a bit of a gut, but I also have big thighs and broad shoulders, and people are generally surprised to find out that I weigh as much as I do. And I think that might have been my saving grace for what happened next. Without a word, the guy starts to move for Kara, and I move to stay in between them. He tries to push me out of his way by shoving me in the chest, but because I believe he underestimated my weight, he only pushed me hard enough to make me take a single step back. 
Immediately, I took that step forward towards him and body checked him hard. Hard as I could. Hard enough to completely knock him over, basically onto his ass. Because we rotated during the back and forth push bit, Kara is now in front of me to my right, somewhat between me and the guy who's trying to scramble to his feet. I reached out and snatched the poor girl up by her waist and spun her towards my truck and yelled for her to get into the driver's side, and she does. I turn back to the guy who's standing up again at this point, and he's breathing hard. He gets right up in my face but doesn't do anything, just breathes at me. I stare him right in his face and mustering up the best dad voice I can, I just say, you need to go. I'm shaking now and I'm absolutely terrified. I had no clue if he had a weapon and I didn't know if he was going to try to fight me and I don't know what I would do if he did. Like I said, I don't really consider myself a tough guy. I don't know how to fight and I've never been in a fight in my life. What if I get badly hurt? What if I get stabbed? What the hell do I do now? I just want to go home wasn't even going to take this damn call. All this is running through my head at lightning speed. After probably around 15 seconds or so, which felt like eons, he kind of huffs a bit and smiles one of the creepiest smiles I've ever seen and finally starts to back off. Sucking his teeth and rubbing his hands together, he slowly walks backwards a few steps, then makes his way to his car and gets in and drives off. I stay motionless, watching him until I could no longer see his taillights. I got Kara's car loaded up on the tow truck, and as we made our way to the dealership, she told me through tears that her car had shut off while she was driving. She pulled onto the shoulder and called her parents, because she was on their insurance. Her parents made the call to the insurance company, who eventually dispatched me to her location. While she was waiting, a bit after she made the call, the guy pulled up in front of her and walked up to her passenger side window to try to talk to her, asking if she needed help, etc. She told him she was fine, that a tow truck was coming and she didn't need any help. But he persisted and she tried to tell him off. Eventually, she tried to roll up the window. Apparently, he was able to stick his arm in the window and got the door unlocked and opened the door. So in fear, she jumped out of the car, leaving her phone inside and ran to the back of her car and stayed put there because it was in the line of sight of traffic. Apparently, he was pretty lewd with her. And whenever she tried to go back to the car, he would prevent her from getting in. Several minutes later, I showed up. Who knows what would have happened had the timing been any different. Her parents were waiting at the dealership when we arrived, and she told them what had just happened. Her parents also gave me a $20 tip, which was all the cash they had on them at the time. And Kara gave me a very tight and clearly heartfelt hug before I left. I never saw her again. I tell you what. Every guy has probably daydreamed at some point of coming to the rescue of a beautiful girl in trouble, myself included. You think you're going to act like a superhero, that you're going to be the cat's ass. But for me, being in that situation, in that moment, is one of the most terrible feelings I've ever had in my life. Being forced into a confrontation I didn't want nor was prepared for, not knowing what to expect from a clearly not well unhinged individual. I didn't feel like the cat's ass and I didn't feel like a hero. I felt like a scared little kid encountering a bully on the playground for the first time. If I'm ever in a situation like that, I will never not intervene though. I just really hope I don't have to.